Today, I have the pleasure for the first time ever doing a head-to-head -head interview with Mr. Jack Lifton and Christopher Ecclestone. How are you both today? Great, thanks. Quite good, thank you. And we're going to start by hitting the ground running here. Both of you will be at the Clean Tech and Technology Metal Summit on May 15th and 16th, and you're going to be discussing the next big thing in technology metals. I'm going to start with you, Christopher. Christopher, can you tell us what you're going to be unveiling? Oh, well, that would be cheating. I'm going, to, I'm going to keep my next big thing thickly veiled until then. And Jack, do you want to have a comment on this, or do you want to go through the list of technology metals and talk about whether they're hot or not right now? Uh, no, actually, uh, I, I think that the big um, event or big happening this year is the switch from an interest in the particular materials to the technologies for mining and refining them. And I see this uh, as a sea change, as they say. Uh, this, uh, in the last few months, I, I've never seen so much interest uh, in, in technology metals and materials, but not in mining them, but rather in, in refining them, fabricating them, using them. And it, it's interesting because we've just had here in the U.S., uh, a series of mainstream uh, press articles on uh, rare earths and technology metals. And uh, the author of that uh, interviewed me and, and, and he said to me, the U.S. government seems oblivious to, to this. I said, yes, that's correct. Okay, so Christopher, do you agree that there is a change in the market to more of the technologies of the existing technology metals? Are technology metals still at the front of the race? I, I would agree that the technologies are, are now full centre because, frankly, many of the old processing technologies were not working uh, and they were making projects unviable. And the best example of that is rare earths, where you have these phenomenal budgets to produce not really all that many rare earths. And with some of these new technologies, it's going to be cheaper to produce them and you'll be able to produce them outside China without, you know, considering labor and all these, you know, labor costs and things like that. So it's going to be much cheaper, and since so the technology is going to move forward, digging up rare earths is no, no rocket science. All right, so let's start there. We're going to go through a list of the different technology metals. Of course, you've, you coined the term, Jack, so let's start with you. Uh, rare earths, are they hot right now? What's going to ha happen if Trump tweets about rare earths? <laughs> That's rare earths are back on the radar in in, in the uh, non-Chinese world. That's for certain. I.e., the production of rare earths. So yes, the the big question here, uh, outside of China, is where is the next rare earth mine going going to come into production? And the answer is I don't know. Uh, I don't see any of them in in very good shape for production in this decade, but. Uh, because of the Trump effect, uh, money is, is beginning to flow in directions that surprise me. So uh, what Christopher just said is absolutely correct. It's way too expensive to dig a hole and fill it with money, i.e. create a mine. But if you can process the material much cheaper than traditionally, that's a whole new ballgame. And I think, I think this is happening right now. So we're into a new rare earth world, I'm certain of it. Okay, Christopher, what do you think? No, I agree totally. I agree totally. But I would say that uh, with my crystal ball, I, I think that the first projects we'll see will be coming out of Africa or out of mm. Australia. Um, and so we will be seeing some rare earth. We'll be seeing a rare earth mine, I would say, by 2020. So that would join then um, with Linus as a producer. Now, which one would be tactful, tactless for me to say, but um, I, I think we'll be seeing another producer by 2020. And Jack, further to your comment about the impact of Trump, let's just go in that direction and tell us a little bit more about what you think the impact of, of <coughs> Trump is on technology metals and sustainability, for instance. Uh, the, the impact that I see, and which has surprised me, because uh, finance is glacially slow to respond to, uh, to crises in, in the long run. But there is a great interest now in, in finding out just what the technology sector is about. 
this this is what this is what uh, U.S. Uh, journalism and U.S. Uh, government has ignored for the last, let's say, hmm, 250 years or so. They they know nothing about how things are made. Uh, all they know is, look, I have a cell phone, mommy. They have no idea where it came from, and then they say, well, it came from China, and that and they they still don't know. And when you explain to them where each of the raw materials came from and what it had to go through to become a component of that phone, they look at you blankly and say, never mind. Now, this cannot go on because if you want to be independent of a China which is increasingly inward drawn, creating its own consumer economy, which will be a voracious eater of technology materials, then we'd better wake up to the fact that just mining is not enough. This, these are supply chain issues. And I, honestly, I've had so many inquiries in the last two months about this particular topic, I'm wondering if I switch to an alternate universe. Honestly, I, I, suddenly Americans are waking up. They're not too awake yet, but they're waking up a bit. And this is, I'm telling you this is an exciting time because suddenly people are asking me to explain to them what they're talking about which is quite novel. And Christopher, I know you have an opinion on this. What are your thoughts? No, I agree totally. Um, uh, I, I found it interesting that in one of the most recent series of House of Cards, they dropped the word Sumerian, um, you know, because some script writer had heard the word. And, of course, as, as rare as it can go, a Sumerian is sort of not one of the more interesting ones, but it has its uses. But dropping that in there suddenly had a whole lot of people saying, Samarium is the rare earth. Uh, no, not really, but it's good. It's good. And um, I suspect that um, uh, Jack is right. We will have Trump stumble into some sort of thing he's seen on 60 Minutes the night before, and he will drop dysprosium into the conversation, if he can pronounce it, and then um, who knows what will happen. Things will explode. His head will explode. The investors' heads will explode. Okay, so Samaria may not be the hottest rare earth right now, as we've just discussed. Christopher, cobalt, thumbs up, thumbs down, neutral. Where are you with cobalt today? Oh, cobalt's fantastic. Um, virtually no supply in North America, um, except for Cuba. If you count Cuba as North America. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be hot. It's going to be hot, and there's not a lot of it. And, Jack, what do you think about cobalt? 85% of our cobalt is coming from the Democratic Republic of the Congo. What a joke. Okay, We, we have not enough cobalt to do the things we do with cobalt every day. Now we're talking about a battery revolution. Uh, I think that industrialists and financiers had better wake up and learn how to spell cobalt. Because I, I agree, that is probably the hot metal of 2017, most likely. So, gentlemen, thank you so much for your thoughts on cobalt. Our next head-to-head -head is going to be on lithium and the lithium-ion battery industry. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, Grace. Thank you.